Now we're going to look at how we can factor basic trinomials where the leading coefficient is 1. So when we say that in our standard quadratic format, we see ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are numerical values that are not equal to 0. So when a is 1, that's what we mean by the leading coefficient being 1. So when there's not another value in front of that x squared, we can use this method. So the first question I want to pose is, are the following two expressions equivalent? Why or why not? So looking here, we have x squared plus 6x plus 8. And on this side, we have x plus 4 times x plus 2. So thinking about this one on the right, we see two binomials that are being multiplied by each other. And when we see that, we remember that we need to use that FOIL method or double distribution. So that just means we're taking each term in both sets of parentheses here in each binomial and multiplying it by the other terms in the other binomial. So we're going to take x times x, and that's our first term, so x squared. Then we're going to take x times 2, which is our outer terms. So x and 2 are both on the outside of these four terms list, right? So that's our o. So that was a plus 2x there. Then we take our inner terms, so i for 4 times x, which is just positive 4x. And then our last terms, or l, 4 times 2 is positive 8. If we simplify and combine like terms here, we end up getting x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now that's what we have back here. So this is what we're going to be focusing on. How can we turn this back into this format where we have our two sets of factors that got us the quadratic? So we want to be flexible enough to go back and forth between these two modes. So the reason that this one is going to expand to that is because we have our x squared plus 6x plus 8 there. We can break 6 up into two different terms, like we saw earlier, and we could say that's the same as if we had x squared plus 2x plus 4x plus 8. And those are the four terms that we got when we used our double distribution. And so that's what we're going to be end up breaking it up into um, when we use our um, factoring shortcut here. So we're going to factor this first trinomial using that method. So we want to turn this into something more like two binomials. So we check and see our leading coefficient is 1. The c value or the constant there is 4. So what we like to do is figure out what is the product of those. So 1 times 4 is 4. And then our middle coefficient or b, the one that's with the x value, that is going to be the number that we're trying to add to. So 4, the number up top, is what we want to multiply to. And the number in the middle is the number we want to add to. So we would say that 2 times 2 would get us 4, but 2 plus 2 also makes 4. So what this means is basically we can rewrite this as x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. And that's all equal to 0. What this helps us see is we can kind of pull out our GCF. If we look at just this first half of the equation, x squared and 2x, they have a GCF of x. When you pull the GCF out, you're left with x plus 2. In the second half of our equation, the GCF of 2x and 4 is positive 2. That means we're left with x plus 2 when we factor a 2 out of 2x and 4. So what this is telling me is that I can now say is I've taken x and I've multiplied it to x plus 2, but I've also taken 2 and multiplied it to the same binomial. So these two factors, x plus 2, are being distributed to my other binomial of x plus 2, which means these two numbers, or sorry, these two binomials multiplied together will get us back to our original um, trinomial. So in order to finish solving this, it's equal to 0. We would set these both individually equal to 0, and we actually see that we have a solution of negative 2, and that actually happens twice, um, so our x value is negative 2 here. So let's test that on another one, because that was kind of a weird case where the number we added to and multiplied to were the same value of 4. So let's check this again. We have a leading coefficient of 1, and the last number that we see is 6. 1 times 6 is 6, so we're going to be multiplying to the number 6. Our middle value, our middle coefficient there is 5, so that's what we're going to be adding to. So what numbers multiply to 6 but add to 5? We could say 3 times 2 does that for us. So we can say that 1x squared plus 3x 
plus 2x plus 6 is the same as what we had before where we were just breaking up that 5x into 3x plus 2x. So with those terms now, split it in half and find your GCF up front. We have x as the GCF of x squared and 3x, and we would have to multiply that by x plus 3 to get back to our previous step. In the second half of our equation, 2 is the GCF, so I'm going to factor out a 2, and I would need to multiply that by x plus 3 as well. So you'll notice that x plus 3 is showing up twice, and the numbers that we were distributing to that are x and positive 2. So what that tells me is that x plus 2 is my first binomial that I distributed to my second binomial of x plus 3. Set this equal to 0, solve for your two x's, so x will equal negative 2 and x will equal negative 3. And those are both of our solutions here. So now you might be wondering, okay, well is there a faster way to do this? And in the case of the leading coefficient being 1, we kind of are starting to see some patterns. So what you'll notice is that when we do this trick at the beginning, where we draw this kind of x box here, we got values of 3 and 2. We used that, we broke it up, we grouped out our GCF, and we found our two binomials. But if you notice, positive 2 showed up here, and positive 3 showed up here. In our first example, 2 and 2 showed up when we broke up x plus 2 times x plus 2. So once you find those two numbers, we can kind of use this as a shortcut when we have that leading coefficient of 1. So we can take in the next one, let's test this out, 1a squared plus 8a minus 20 with a leading coefficient of 1. Let's see what we would need to multiply to. 1 times negative 20 is negative 20. So those are the numbers we're looking for factors of. And the number that we want to add to is that middle coefficient of 8. So what numbers multiply to negative 20 but add to 8? So when it's negative, you know you're going to need one negative number and one positive number. So I'm thinking 4 and 5, 2 and 10. Well, 4 and 5 add up to 9, so that doesn't help me. 2 and 10, um, together, they, could, they have a difference of 8 there. So that might end up working. We just need to decide, well, which one's positive, which one's negative. Since I want positive 8, I would need to do 10 minus 2. And so if we were to break it up, we would have a squared plus 10a minus 2a minus 20. And so that's where that 10 and negative 2 are coming in. We could go back up to this long method that we showed up top, but let's try our shortcut here. Because we just found two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to 8, we should be able to set it up as a plus 10 times a minus 2, because those were the two values that we got that are going to help us make it to this final process. So positive 10 minus 2. It's still set equal to 0, so we're not done. We don't have our solution yet. We still need to do the last step of setting this equal to 0 individually. So a plus 10 will equal 0, meaning a will be negative 10. a minus 2 is also set equal to 0, so a can also be positive 2. So those will be our two solutions for our quadratic. So using this method up top will work for any or any quadratic formula or any quadratic function here. Um, but when it has this leading coefficient of 1, we can kind of skip the step of where we grouped this up into two different parts. Um, we will need to come back to our grouping method later on when we see examples that don't have a leading coefficient of 1. But when you have this, use that shortcut to save yourself some time and you can get to your answer a little faster. So if you want to try the last one, go ahead and press play when you're ready. This time we're looking for factors of positive 12 that add to negative 8. So the factors of that would be negative 6 and negative 2 because negative 6 times negative 2 makes 12, negative 6 minus 2 makes negative 8. So we will break this up into y minus 6 and y minus 2. Those are both set equal to 0, so y can equal positive 6 or y could equal positive 2. And those are two solutions in that last expression or last equation there. So let's apply this to some geometry. We have two angles here that are going to be linear pairs. And remember that a linear pair will always be supplementary to the angle adjacent to it. So we're going to add these two together and set them equal to 180. So x squared plus 80 is our first angle. We can add that with our second angle, which is 2x plus 52. 
and we know that their sum will be 180 degrees. So we'll combine like terms here, and when we do that, we're left with x squared plus 2x, and then we're going to subtract 180 and combine positive 80 and positive 52, which gets us a total of negative 48. That leaves us with zero on the right side. And remember, we always need to be setting our quadratics equal to zero in order to solve for our solutions. So at this point now, we can use our shortcut method because we see this leading coefficient of one on our x squared. So we're gonna be looking for factors of negative 48 that add to positive two. So what's gonna work for us there is positive eight and negative six. So a negative times a positive gets us that negative value, but adding them together will make positive two there. So that means our two binomials will be eight, sorry, x plus eight and x minus six. They're both set equal to zero. So x can be negative eight or x could be positive six. Now go back and check to make sure that those both work in your um, actual geometry diagram here, right? We have negative eight squared, which would be 64 plus 80, and that does make 144. And then if we plug in negative eight here, we would have negative 16 plus 52, which makes 36. So not drawn to scale with our diagram, but they're reasonable numbers that add up to 180, so that would work. And if we test out positive six, six squared um, would be 36 plus 180 would be um, 116. And then six times two is 12 plus 52 gets us 64. And those are also supplementary Looks um, like that might be um, drawn, might not be drawn to scale either, but it could still work for that those numbers. So even if this is not drawn to scale, um, we just want to think back to like our first example where we were seeing some with um, angles that were worth zero when we plugged in x of zero, and that wouldn't make sense for those diagrams that we saw in our GCF video. Um, but when we have this diagram, as long as they are numbers that are greater than zero but less than 180 it would be a reasonable number to put in that linear pair. So we're gonna try the next one. If you think you can do it, go ahead and pause and try on your own plus play when you're ready. We have vertical angles this time, so that means that they're going to be congruent or we can set them equal to each other. So I'll take these two expressions and set them equal to one another. Then I'm gonna combine like terms so that I have my equation set equal to zero. That's gonna leave me with x squared minus nine x plus 20 equals zero. So to factor, we're looking for factors of 20 that add to negative nine. So what's gonna work for that would be negative five and negative four. We have x minus five and x minus four as our two binomials. And when we solve for those, we'll get x equals five and x equals four. So checking to make sure that this works, two times five squared would be 50, minus 35 would be 15, and then 25 plus 10 is 35, minus 20 is also 15. So those are equal, and that could be the measures of our vertical angles. When we plug in a value of four, two x squared minus seven x, we would have um, two times 16, which is 32, minus 28, which is four, and then 16 plus eight um, would be 24 minus 20, and also four. So again, kind of small, very acute angles there, but they are realistic numbers for our angle values. In our next example, we are given a right triangle and we have the legs and the hypotenuse. So thinking about sides on a right triangle, we can always use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna take our leg of x plus our other leg of x plus three, and we're gonna square them both and take their sum, set them equal to the hypotenuse squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So we're just applying these side lengths to that formula. So x squared is just x squared, here, we are multiplying a binomial by itself. So we're taking x plus three times itself. Think about FOIL here, right? We need to FOIL these two binomials. So x squared comes down, and then we start our FOIL process. So x times x is x squared. Th um, x times three is positive three x. Three times x is three x, and three times three is positive nine and then we bring down our 225 that we got by taking 15 squared. We're gonna go through our process of setting equal to zero, so by combining all of our like terms, we get 2x squared plus 6x minus 216, and that equals zero. So 
we got that by balancing our equation here um, and getting it equal to zero. So right away, we notice that our leading coefficient is not one. So when you get to this point, the first thing you wanna check for is, is there a GCF that I can factor out first? So what I see is that these are all even coefficients, which means we can factor out a two. So what that means, I could divide by two on this side and on the other side. And so if we divide by two, we are going to be left with x squared plus 3x minus 108, and 0 divided by 2 would just be 0. So we're just left with this new trinomial that does have a leading coefficient of 1. So now we're going to find factors of negative 108 that add to 3. So thinking about what those might be, we have um, positive 12 times negative 9 that would add to 3 and multiply to negative 108. So those will be our two expressions, x plus 12 and x minus 9. Those are going to be multiplied and set equal to 0. Therefore, our two solutions will be x equals negative 12 and x equals positive 9. So looking at our picture, one of our side lengths of our triangle is just x. So there's no way that x could be negative 12 because the distance can never be negative. So the only solution that will work here for us is 9. If you want to try the next one on your own, go ahead. This time we're given this rectangle, which actually has a right triangle hidden inside of it. So again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to try to solve for this. So we have x squared as our first leg, plus x plus 4 as our second leg. And remember, we're squaring the entire expression and setting that equal to the hypotenuse squared. So we have x squared plus x squared plus 8x plus 16. And I got this part by foiling that expression. So if you got stuck there, make sure you write that out to foil. Then we are going to set that equal to 400. We'll go ahead and combine like terms and set equal to 0, which leaves us with our um, 2x squared plus 8x minus 384 equals 0. So again, we notice right away that that leading coefficient is not 1. So we want to factor out 2 here. When we do that, we'll get x squared plus 4x minus 192. And 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So we're looking for factors of negative 192 this time that add to 4. And the ones that work there are going to be 16 and negative 12. So I suggest if you get big numbers like that, just start plugging things in, um, testing out some factors that you know. Obviously, it's a big number, so start with higher multiples um, than 10. See what you can figure out. All right, now we're going to break this up. We have x plus 16, and we have x minus 12, and that is equal to 0. So our x values will be negative 16, or x could be 12. Looking back to our diagram, though, one of our side lengths is x, so there's no way it could be negative 16. So therefore, our only solution here for our picture will be x equals 12. All right, into our last examples, we have two problems where we are using um, finding segment lengths in our circles here. So we've got a segment that's outside of the circle on this secant, and then other segments that are on the secant here. So the formula that we learned for this is to take the outer segment and multiply it by the whole secant segment. Set that equal to the outer segment and the whole secant segment of the other. So we'll take x times x plus 5 and set that equal to 6 times 6 plus 15, which is 21. Distribute your x, so x squared plus 5x will equal 126. And then we will set this equal to 0 by subtracting 126 from each side. So we're looking for factors of negative 126 that add to 5. And the numbers that work for us this time are going to be 14 and negative 9. So our two expressions are going to be x plus 14 and x minus 9. Those are equal to 0. So our two solutions will be x equals negative 14 or x equals positive 9. So again, x is an actual length there of our segment. So there's no way we can have a negative value. And the only solution in our diagram will be 9. In our last example, if you want to try it, go ahead and press play when you're ready. We're going to take 10 times 18, 
makes that equal to x times x plus 3. That's our outer times our whole segment there. So we get 180 equals x squared plus 3x. So 0 will equal x squared plus 3x minus 180. That means we're looking for factors of negative 180 that add to 3. So the numbers that work for us this time are going to be 15 and negative 12. So our two binomials are x plus 15, x minus 12, and therefore x could be negative 15 or x could be 12. Thinking about our diagram again, x cannot be negative, therefore our only solution here would be 12.